Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is time for reflection. Our time for reflection leader today is the Right Reverend Stephen Robson, the Bishop of Dunkeld. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer and uh, ladies and gentlemen, members. I, I bring you the goodwill of the people of Dunkeld, the Catholic people of the Diocese of Dunkeld, today to this. And thank you very much for inviting me. My father was 90 yesterday. He's been badly traumatized, I would say, by many of the developments in the world around him. Like so many of the elderly, he's ill at ease with modernity. He's had enough of drastic change in his life. So sadly, on his 90th birthday last night after dinner, he said to me, son, I'm glad I'm on the way out. But it wasn't the threat of a war or terrorist violence that caused him to feel like this but rather for him the endless cultural changes in contemporary society. It brought home to me that my father and countless others like him are in culture shock. Sociologists tell us that culture shock is the personal disorientation a person feels when experiencing a trauma caused by a clash between unfamiliar worldviews. In the last decade, Cultural change has arguably been, been Scottish society's greatest challenge, or one of them at least. And it's not so much social changes as, that are the problem, as rather the increased pace of those changes that have left many people, not only the elderly, struggling behind. The result for some has been cultural disorientation. Furthermore, in a highly globalised world, when all the world's social challenges and cultural problems appear as if they're sprouting in our own backyard, we can't just tackle them all at once. We need time to absorb change if culture shock is to be avoided. Each one of us constructs our reality from the building blocks that our parents, our families, our communities and our society provide us with. Of course, there are times when our understanding of reality must be challenged. But please, may you, as legislators, be compassionate about the effects of change. Not everyone can absorb it at the same rate. There will always be the wayfarers, the stragglers, and the reluctant and the downright stubborn. Win minds and hearts first, rather than coerce by force of law. May legislators be mindful that for believers, man-made positive law such as made in this chamber can bind bodies and does bind bodies, but not necessarily souls. For if perchance positive law is found to be in serious opposition to God's law, for example, or to the natural law written on human hearts, then God's law for the believer will always trump man's. That's the first lesson, I suppose, in religious freedom. For as Thomas More once said, quoting the Gospels, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but to lose his soul? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.